Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for a new episode of Farming Simulator Time Lapse on Hudat Huda Range map. My name is Johnny M and I am your host. And just as in previous episodes, uh, our sheep and pigs require food to stay alive and to produce uh, each of them their product. For pigs it's more pigs, for sheep it's wool. So this is what we are doing right now. Now we'll take this uh, wagon and we'll bring in some more uh, grass. While we are fast forwarding through the night. Almost 460 sheep right now and about 300 uh, pigs because 300 is uh, the level that we uh, decided to stay for a while until at least until we get uh, more fields. Now it's a little bit easier because we have this uh, uh, New Holland combine which helps us uh, harvest the field uh, faster not a lot faster because after all as i was saying in previous episode uh, the speed of the harvesting it's basically the same throughout all the combines the thing that varies is the size of the cutter and the bunker size of the combine i think in real life it's not like this in real life um, a bigger combine will also harvest faster because it is able to process the crop uh, faster because the, the speed at which a combine cruises while it's harvesting it's of course not determined by directly by the power of the combine it's uh, it's related to the to the speed of the processing of the grain because uh, there's a reason why it's called combine because it's a device that combines in itself uh, a number of uh, processes uh, they used to do it separately uh, when the when people started to process the fields with machinery uh, they used to do separate steps with separate machines then they uh, combined in it in, in a machine they, that they call the combine, obviously. Now we are producing some more feed. Again, three ingredients are needed. Uh, we loaded uh, the rest of the barley that we have. Now we are loading some uh, wheat. And I think this placement of the feed mixer is not ideal because these silos are in the way. So I was thinking on uh, <clears throat> editing a little bit the placement of, uh, of these buildings. I never did it before, but I assume uh, you can do it in the vehicles.xml file where each vehicle including the placeables um, have an address uh, with the x and the y uh, uh, coordinates so i assume if you go and uh, edit these x and y coordinates um, the placement will be, of the building will change so I, I should try it i never tried it before but i should try it Okay, and here I usually, as you probably know, set the speed of the fast-forwarding post-production to at least 12, 10 or 12 or even 16 when I'm harvesting. Uh, but this time it looks like I, uh, I forgot and I set it just to 5x. So uh, let's put it like this, you'll have the chance 
to enjoy the harvesting of this field for longer. Also listen for some good music uh, in the background. Of course it's a no copyrighted music, so it's not your average pop singer. But the music is it's still great. Yeah, so for a number of episodes now I was driving the combine myself. Especially when I got this new one. I wanted to test it myself a little bit. But now I guess it's uh, it's time to let the the helper uh, drive it and me driving it alone along of course ideally uh, when you drive along a combine uh, ideally you want to have as as longer fields as possible so that you don't have to make uh, these u-turns uh, as often but oh well, this is a standard size map. And um, uh, fields are so big on a standard size map. As I was saying previously, I personally prefer uh, bigger maps like 4x or even 16x, though I never I never played for for long on a 16x map, although I did in FS13, I think. But I played a lot on 4x maps. Basically, all my gameplays uh, before getting to YouTube, all my gameplays were on uh, 4x map. Oops. For me, these standard maps are just too small, and probably not the maps themselves the maps are okay but the fields are too small for me i usually like um, bigger and longer fields of wool awaiting selling so we should make decent money soon but I probably am intending to uh, do some uh, wood cutting because as you know when we last time uh, planted trees we actually planted uh, a lot and we haven't had the chance to cut them all so I'll probably um, lease for another hour the Ponzi cutter and cut some more trees the money are also welcomed especially at the beginning of the road although some might say that 20th episode it's not the beginning of the road yeah, but this happens when you play at uh, hard, hard difficulty. Because from what I, I saw, uh, most of the YouTubers that make uh, uh, farming simulator uh, gameplay videos are playing on medium. Very few play at hard difficulty. For me, I just don't see the point of playing on, uh, uh, higher on lower difficulty than hard. There were times when I had more free time than than what to do with it. When I wanted that uh, the yields were actually lower, and I was researching uh, how to modify the yields of uh, crops to make them lower. 
for them to be more realistic and for the gameplay to be even longer and harder. Yeah, but I guess right now... <laughs> yeah, even, even at this difficulty, the game is taking uh, tens up to hundreds of hours to uh, achieve something uh, significant. But then again, if you are okay with doing over and over again the same activities, you can make decent money and faster, like like logging for example. Because if, if you were to cut uh, 10 hours in a row trees, you'd be making millions. But then again, we are not robots. We like to try different things. We like to diversify. So the feeder is almost full. Only 10,000 liters are feeded. The rest is in the silos. And this ramp that I put here really helps. I took the control of the combine for the rest pass. The last pass. Okay, now that we finished this field, for a um, couple of days, maybe more, we will not be seeing anything else, because we have a little bit of uh, uh, full reserves build up, so we can afford to let the field uh, rest. I thought that we had more wool and that the place needed to be clean, but we will wait at least uh, until the, the last wool pellet will be at max. I'll bring back this um, semi-trailer because we are at the point where we should uh, sell off the excess of uh, pigs. Okay, and here we got um, a great demand for wool. If you saw the, the time jumping for a couple of hours, uh, that's because I lost a couple of hours. I guess I lost a few seconds, but 
but nothing uh, too important was lost. So we will try to get rid of all the wool, taking advantage of this um, great demand. Okay, 208,000 euros for the first batch of wool. Let's see how much we'll get for the second batch. I think the same. Because they were both uh, full. Now for this last one we'll get slightly less. But still I think in total we'll get about 600,000. that time of the year when we should do a little bit of wood cutting and when I say wood cutting I don't mean uh, a muscular man with an axe I mean uh, an automated wood cutting machine Okay, and this time around I did not forgot to accelerate the footage a little bit more at 7x while we are cutting this patch of trees. Yeah, because I figured out since we made almost 600,000 selling wool, why not? make even more when selling wood and then figure out where do we want to invest this money I guess we might buy field and the tractor or or tractor and probably field I don't know what's more important right now I guess I'll decide in the next episode I assume there's more techniques in cutting trees. I um, usually do it like this. I cut them in 8 meter pieces on my left. I think people were using modified cutters that cut the trees in one piece. I guess you get more money like this and probably because of this you can utilize the trailer more efficiently because even at 8 meters in the trailer visually there is more place so I think you can cut them instead of 4 8 meters you can cut them let's say in 2 16 meters Or well, probably there are trailers that can fit a uh, fully grown tree. Yeah, because the trees that you plant will always go to the highest state. I think it's state 6. While the trees on your map that are placed on the map with the uh, with the giant editor uh, they usually stay in the state that you place them uh, that's why for example on this map most of the fears are uh, at lower states 
than the highest one. So they're smaller. And also they're darker. Because I remember when I planted my first trees on this map, I also cut a couple of existing trees and those were darker. So I'll try to not uh, use this cutter for more than an hour because as you know if you go if you go past the first hour the leasing price for the second hour is deduced so uh, I usually try to use it just one hour also because two hours straight of cutting uh, can become boring yes I've seen players cutting trees for episode after episode I don't understand how they don't get bored I guess for me an hour is the max that I can do in one go and even then I uh, by the finish of the session I start counting how many trees I have left Yes, this cutting process is cool and all, but uh, just like any activity, if you do it over and over again, uh, it becomes tedious. That's why you have to alternate between different uh, activities. That's basically why this uh, game, for each uh, subsequent version, introduces uh, more and more activities. <laughs> which again if you watched my other episodes uh, you know my opinion on that and my opinion is the fact that all the newly added activities since FS 2009 were inspired directly from mods and were actually introduced first in mods so uh, I cannot give credits to Giants for all these new activities uh, in FS since uh, FS 2009. It's it's really the credit uh, the credit goes to the modders. Okay, so it's this uh, cutting session is finished. We will now deliver the cutter to the selling, well, to the to the return point. And as always, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, then give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions, as always, leave them in the comments section. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.